It is March the 11th, 2022. That was the week. Keith and Andrew, we're back again. Keith, what kind of week was it? We've got Ukraine, of course. The news gets worse and worse there. And yep. I think we want to talk too much about that. Um, you found, though, a company that I like and that you, I thought you liked, and you're saying they suck. What's going on? Uh, no, it's funny, actually. I posted this. This is this week's newsletter. Apple sucks. Don't forget the question mark. Um, and I posted this to a Telegram group where a Russian friend of mine, she is from Kazakhstan, said, yeah, it's been that, that way ever since Jobs left. And I replied, there's irony in this title. <laughs> mm. Which he said, ah, Apple doesn't suck. And that is indeed the message that Apple doesn't suck. Oh, okay. So what? What? So, so I assume some people are unhappy with what Apple released this week. Uh, some people are, but Om Malik isn't, and that is the lead article. Om has a newsletter. Well, he has a website actually, which he also sends out as, an, as a newsletter, and he wrote what I think is a, a great article called "Peek into the Future on My Om," and if you go to it. Um, he talks about this new Apple display, and mm -hmm. Ohm is the proud owner of the $5,000 Apple XDR display, and this is a $1,600, you know, much cheaper display, and he writes a story about why he's lusting after this, even though he owns the more expensive so, one. But, but, okay, but before we get to Ohm, so are some people critical because the Apple gear is superfluous, too expensive? bad what's the critique of apple this week it, it depends who the criticizer is like like mg siegler's critique prior to the announcement was it's going to be boring and predictable yeah turns out but it usually wrong. is the march release the, the march press thing isn't usually not that big a deal right no one was expecting what were uh, they expecting no this is a huge deal though that's that that's why it's worth talking so about what's home. the big deal is it the 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 desktop computer or the screen they're different, but the screen is the big deal. Because it's a 15, why? It isn't a screen, it's a computer. So it's not the, yeah, because, but, it, it, but it won't it, work on its own. It won't work on its own, but it's got its own iOS operating system inside. It's got its own uh, ability to render video. For example, because of that, the camera that it's got built in yeah, I saw that. can move with you as you move. It's got its own built-in music processor with five speakers. So this is and just basically it, your excuse to spend more money on Apple Gear, Keith. I'm sure you're less, already told today money. that you're buying this. Less money, because because <laughs> I'm I'm. Well, with, you had to spend five thousand on the old screen. Now you only had to spend. I did. Yeah, I did. I did indeed. And now I'm selling the old screen on eBay. Did you have the five K screen too? I have the 6K screen is the one I've got. And this is a 5K screen. So this is a step down. No, I mean down. 5K, $5,000 screen. Oh, yeah, I do. Yeah. Yeah. I always, only the best, Andrew. So here, the best. Yeah, I know. But here's, here, so here's my thinking as an Apple, not as hardcore as you, but still someone who likes Apple gear and always wants to buy stuff. Why, will, why would I buy this one rather than waiting till the fall when there'll be an iMac for a, probably a, a little bit more with a computer in it. Well, I, actually, their the rumor is they're not going to have an iMac, that, it, that, that they're going to have this separate with a screen um, because then uh, the upgrade becomes much easier. You can choose which module to upgrade. And the screen's going to get software upgrades now. Now that it's a computer, it'll get software upgrades and get better and better. And it will work with the software on the on the Apple, you know, the Apple side, very well. So um, I, I also bought one of the studio things um, because I think that's... We haven't got it yet. They're not selling. They're, you're not actually in stock, are they? No, it, it won't come till May. Mine. So you bought the you bought the 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 desktop computer and the screen. Yeah, and I'm selling. I'm selling my five thousand dollar screen which will pay for about two-thirds of what i'm buying and then in terms of the quality of the the camera how will it compete with say the cameras you and i are using for this 
I think it'll be quite good because of the ability to zoom in and move and things. It's a, it's an, it's a 12 megapixel camera and the ones you and I use are higher than that. Yeah. So it, it isn't as high end as we're using, but streaming is only 1080p. So it doesn't use, you know, everything anyway. And we'll see. I'll, I'll experiment with using it. I, I think I'll still use an external camera for high end stuff. Yeah, well, you just use, but it, it, it's, I, I saw some of the news pieces about this suggesting that it's another way that Apple can significantly um, improve their, their bottom line and their revenue. But is there really a big market for this, for this kind of high end stuff? Uh, less so for the high end stuff. I mean, that the top end Apple Studio, if you spec it all out, fully loaded is about seven and a half thousand dollars. Um, so that's a lot of money for anyone. Yeah, I mean, the um, Times piece, I, I think it was Times, one of the pieces I read said that for um, for studios, for the movie people, the the desktop is is a, is a splash in the bucket compared to their high-end camera, so it wouldn't cost a lot. But this is Oh, no, they'll buy it. Market, right? the, um, the funny thing is, so, so what Apple did, just to be specific, is they created this M1 Ultra chip, which is two M1 Max chips glued together. And it outperforms just anything in the world at that price point right now. But they also slipped in that the Mac Pro will be replaced later. So they've got something else coming that's even above that. And th so they're going to go all the way from a you know seven or $800 laptop all the way through to probably a ten to fifteen thousand dollar pro setup, using the same chip technology all the way through. Yeah. So you don't have to compromise on quality if you don't need the throughput. You just buy one of the lower end ones, which has the same processing power, but just can do less all at the same time. So what is how does this leave us with Apple? You're still really very bullish. I mean, this isn't going to touch on their self-driving car or any of the other bigger projects. This is still yeah. part of the enthusiast market. I'm assuming we never would have got these products if um, if the who's the British design guy who invented oh, the, the arm people. No, the the British design. Oh, oh him, yeah, he Which left. I think he would be turning over if he was dead in his grave at the. Well, he's show. not dead, but he left. He got pushed out. He got pushed out, and the. If you look at the Apple Studio computer, you know... You can't put it in your pocket, which he wanted to put everything in your pocket. Well, also, it isn't designed by somebody who cares about design. It's just a box, you know. I mean, it's, so, so, so the techies have got... The techies have fought back at Apple. The design people are on retreat, in retreat. Do you think that's fair? I, I think... Uh, I, I don't think they're in retreat, but they're subordinate to the product people now. And the, Good, and, well... And the, Apple, the people who do marketing yes, demographics. Yeah, for any Kazakhs who misunderstand Keith's, uh, Keith's uh, mailing, uh, Apple doesn't suck. In fact, if anything, sucks less after this week than it ever sucked, and Keith never believed it sucked. So right. it's good news and a week where we need a lot of good news. More crypto, Keith, more of the time. Surprise, yep. surprise. So this is a whole section in the newsletter because there's a lot this week. Um, there's Joe Biden's executive order, which we can get to. There's Credit Suisse talking about a new monetary world order, which Jack Dorsey, RIP, state-controlled money, agrees with. There's Stripe deciding to get into the crypto payments business. And there's um, a piece you sent me, Andrew, from The Times, which is talking about the problems with crypto and the fraud and the BS, especially in the Dow world. Yeah, and you didn't buy that. You thought it was anti-tech. Well, I didn't disagree with it, uh, it but it's a bit like, you know, th there's bad things happen. And anytime there's innovation, bad people yeah, come. Well you sound like an NRA, NRA guy when someone kills someone says, people kill people, guns don't kill people. But I just don't buy this DAO's DAO stuff. I just think it's sexy. Ah, you've changed. I, I, there's never been a DAO in human history, and there never will be. Well, there, there are DAOs. my final statement on DAOs. Yeah, no, there are, I mean, there are already DAOs in human history that oh, are not bad ones. But, give me uh, some examples. 
Did you see that Bessemer Ventures uh, it's in the right. section. You're changing the subject. Give me an example of a DAO that actually existed. What is it called? A dist distributed it's or a, a distributed autonomous organization. Okay. Give me an example of one that actually works in history. I think I think the one that I would point to is the DAOs that underlie the world of distributed finance, DeFi, that create these rules that allow you to borrow and lend crypto at and get large. Yeah, I mean, Keith, that's 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 too confusing. It's something that actually people will understand. A DAO. How how is it ever? How we ever really had one? Uh, let, I'll tell you what. Like, let's trust without Google. Anything without. What is the best DAO? Question mark. Put it on a DAO. I mean, Uniswap. the anarchists will have a field day. No, with this, uh, but... Uniswap is. The best DAO. Uniswap is is a decentralized exchange celebrating Women's Day. Please go away. How do I get rid of this? Oh, there. Um, yeah, Uniswap is actually fantastic. It, it's a it's a cent centerless marketplace for crypto buying and selling. Sounds good in theory. I wonder what its practice is. So, so crypto continues to. Well, the big news is, I think the abstract Dorsey, I mean, it hasn't really made Square any more valuable. I, I know that PayPal's down. A lot of these, a lot of these fintech companies, at least, are in crisis. What's going on on the market? Well, I think I think the biggest thing, Andrew, this week is Biden's announcement. That's a catalyst for a lot of this thinking. And I, I don't know if I'm familiar with so what. what yeah, what did Biden say? I mean, he's, so, got his, he, to be fair to to Uncle Joe, he's. He's probably got his mind on other things except for crypto this week, Keith, doesn't he? Uh, I'm not convinced that that's true because um, <laughs> there, is, there is a lot of reasons. I'm amazed that he even knew what it was. But anyway, go on. So this is the quote. My, my administration places the highest urgency on research and development efforts into the potential design and deployment options of a U.S. central bank digital currency. Ooh. These efforts should include assessments of possible benefits and risks for consumers, investors, and businesses, financial stability and systemic risk, payment systems, national security, the ability to exercise human rights, financial inclusion and equity, and the actions required to launch US CBDC if doing so is deemed to be in the national interest. This is my theory of why he signed that, is that some minor crypto person in his administration slipped it under the door and he thought he was signing something on the Ukraine. <laughs> well, it's interesting. There is a, the angle, the Russian Ukraine angle here is this. I got an email this week from a Russian engineer I've worked with several times called Sergei Zukov and Sergei lives in Samara, which is two hours South of Moscow. He's, a, he's educated in the technical university there. He's a programmer. He's really good. And he told me that all of his customers are US-based and they can't pay him anymore. Mm. And he, he said, could we set up a new company where we put a USDC wallet so they can pay in dollars and he can draw it out in USDC to avoid the ruble? And that right there in that conversation. I'm not sure if you should be saying this publicly for him or for yourself. You, so he's asking you to break the law. No, it's not against the law. It's, it's there's no law being broken here. There's no there's no sanctions on um, Russian individuals buying and selling crypto. What do you make, Keith, of digital businesses essentially shutting down uh, the, the the credit card companies, PayPal? all of them shutting off the Russian spigot. Do you think it's the correct policy? Um, no, and I think it's dangerous. I think basically what's happening is private companies are ta taking it upon themselves to behave like nation states. But you've always said they are nation states, so that's just the reality. You're saying that you've always said they're more powerful than nation states, so that's not a bad thing, that's just a reality. Well, I, I'm a bit more subtle than that. What, what I point to is the growth of these global organizations shines a light on the limitations of nation states. And that, right. that's reflected here. But I don't prefer a world run by big tech. Um, I prefer a world run by the global DAOs. population. <laughs> DAOs probably would play a part there. Um, and I think big tech would be very dangerous. And some of the decisions they're making now 
you know, make that. Are there any clear. this week that are particularly egregious? I'm sure Facebook have fucked up as they always do. I saw that Sheryl Sandberg is in Dubai of all places giving a speech for International Women's Day. Well, here's here's the news on Facebook. Um, I watched a BBC six minute BBC uh, piece from um, the 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 uh, east of Ukraine showing dead Russian soldiers, um, a lot of them. Uh, it was very graphic. Facebook will now allow posts calling for violence against Russian soldiers. Well, you know, that if, if you're a gung-ho kind of nationalist, yeah, okay, I get it. Uh, Russia's terrible and we all support Ukraine. But this is undermining their current... Um, uh, you know. Yeah, but they're damned if they do, they're damned if they don't. I can see the other posts saying Facebook um, is not allowing anyone to post resistance for Ukrainians to fight the Russians. So whatever they do, they're going to get criticized. Which is, so. which, which is another reason why, if they were really smart, they would try not to editorialize and be a platform, but that, that's boat has sailed. They're, they're now our editor. I mean, to be I'm the last person in the world to defend Facebook. It's not their choice. I mean, the reality is, is that people think of them as an editorial product and they're trying to uh, manage it and say that you can publish some things and not others. I mean, that's not Facebook's fault. Yeah, but it's, it's impossible when, when you have you know, almost 3 billion users who reflect... But that's a critique of the medium, not of Facebook itself. Right. So you, you can't glue together the New York Times editorial board with a global social network. Right. But this, but this does speak of, I mean, this particular crisis speaks of, and as I said, I, I'm the last person to excuse Facebook, but they're going to be damned if they do and damned if they don't. They're going to get criticism in whatever they do. It's unavoidable. Correct. Correct. Because everybody uses Facebook. Not every, you don't, but... Every, people of, of all walks and points of view use Facebook. So anything they do is going to have enemies and friends. Um, what do you make of the argument that this is the first TikTok war? Uh, is there a particular platform or product or network that do you think is sort of really shaping this? I mean, it's certainly not a Facebook war. Well, I, I, I think it's, um, it's an internet war. Um, Zelensky right. has done a fantastic job of using the internet to broadcast and comment and poke Putin for negotiations today. Yeah. Um, uh, so Zelensky is a way better user of the internet than Putin. Um, Putin is, is... Well, I guess it's not Putin so much as his people. They seem to have... They seem to have fallen back into their old habits, pre-digital yeah. habits, because they were quite skilled at using it. Yeah. And I think Michael McFall, the former ambassador to Moscow, uh, I actually spoke in his embassy with him in, and his wife in attendance a few years ago. He has really used uh, the internet very well. Um, he's evolved his, uh, his thinking. I saw him today talking about... Uh, you know, defending the fact that NATO can't really affect the outcome here and mm -hmm. not giving the false impression that it could, thus fueling belief that uh, Zelensky can win. Um, the, the reality is Putin's war is not a disaster. The reality is his war is working slowly, but working, and it's going to get worse before it gets better. Mm. And McFall was the voice of reason, and, and he's all over the internet, all over Twitter, all over TV as well. He's he's leveraging the technology better than Biden, actually. Why, why isn't McFall in the administration? He teaches at Stanford, right? Yeah, maybe he doesn't want to be. I mean, he's he's probably enjoying. It's hard to imagine most people, especially ex polls, want to be. A... They never give up politics. Politics. Well, he's also an independent thinker. You know, he's talking about um, how foolish it was for announcements to be made about giving MiG fighters to Poland, who in turn could give them to Ukraine. He said, look, if you want to give weapons to Ukraine, great, but don't talk about it. Just do it. Well, the thing that's chilling, I don't want to get into a conversation on this, is that 
if that actually happened and it was clear it happened, then Russia has every excuse to go to war with Poland too, because yeah. basically Poland's yeah. declaring war on Russia. But that, let's leave that. Um, well, I'm pleased that Apple doesn't suck because that's one reason to be cheerful this week. There's too much bad news. What about startup of the week? You picked another small little startup that no one's ever heard of, Keith. Well, this is a startup whose stock is about to decline by thousands of a percent. Their Amazon has announced. I've never heard of them, Amazon. What, what do they do? What don't they do is the question, really. Um, 20 to 1 stock split. Their share price is currently over well over $2,000. So this will bring the share price from 2785 down to about $140 a share, meaning that people on E-Trade can buy whole shares of Amazon again. Um, and last time they did this, the price after the split was $62 a share, and it's now $2,700. So getting to buy this share for uh, $140 probably will be attractive for lots of people. So it's quite a clever decision. So what actually means? It means you should or shouldn't buy Amazon. Well, that that's... This should be irrelevant to that question. It should be, but it won't be because giving access to shares probably boosts buying. So it probably will go up because of this and already has. Um, would I buy Amazon? I think I would. I mean, only something like, you know, 5% of world retail goes through Amazon, um, of, of online retail, and 1% of all retail goes through Amazon. Well, maybe your next... Newsletter headline should be Amazon sucks, question mark. Yes. What sucks less, Amazon or Apple? You know, the funny thing is I use Amazon probably more than Apple. I mean, on a daily basis, but I love Apple. If you give up one, you would give up Amazon. Because, I mean, yeah, I could I live without Amazon more happily than if i living without Apple. Because then you'd have to live with Microsoft products. Yeah. I gave up TikTok, if that's any help. I never had TikTok. You know, I had one terrible experience today on Microsoft. What is their messaging video Teams. Platform? Teams. It just didn't work. No, it's terrible. How can a company that's worth hundreds of billions, actually trillions of dollars, have a core product that not work? Can you imagine Apple having that? What was the symptom of it not working? You just every time I went into the um, into the the chat, it th it threw me out. Right. Yeah, uh, you know it's a clunky product. It, it's and my wife, who, who work who uses it all the time for corporate reasons, said that she's been having the same problem all week. Yeah. I'm so, not a so big... Microsoft hasn't changed its spots, has it? Uh, well, it's it's certainly done a good job for its shareholders since it got the new CEO. So um, it depends who you are. I've got no love for Microsoft. I do I do still use uh, Microsoft Windows for running some software that doesn't run well on Apple. Mm. Okay. Well, Amazon is the startup of the week. Uh, and what about the tweet of the week, Keith? My favorite. Tweet of the week is um, a nice little tweet saying you're overlooking a source of diversity, age. And it's, um, it's a Harvard um, Business Review story about age as a key component of diversity. And this you can is self-interested, Keith, isn't it? Totally. I, I only posted this because I'm old. Um, and, and I do happen to think that old and clever do go together for a lot of people. And startups are... Um, you know, obviously driven mainly by young people who, who are disruptive, but there are quite a few of big thinking, older disruptors who get overlooked. And this is their Can moment. Give me one example. Andrew, you and me, obviously. No, I, it was just you. I'm not old. You're old. Exactly. I was pulling you into my realm there. I was trying to younger myself by associating with you. younger, Keith. I could be your <laughs> child. <laughs> well, finally, and I guess we have to talk about this. Who's going to win tomorrow? I fear that Tottenham will win. I think they're on fire. I, right them. <laughs> I mean, it's because we both have such bad teams that we just assume <laughs> the other one will win. We are 
slightly less bad than you at the moment, which probably means we'll lose. What do you think about Abramovich having Chelsea taken off him? Oh, I'm, I'm a bit wary because I'm hoping they'll go out of business, but I'm sure that they'll figure out a way around it. What do you think? Well, uh, aside from I is hate Abramovich, Chelsea, not Abramovich. Abramovich. Oh, it's Abramovich. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, aside from the fact that I hate Chelsea and anything bad that happens to them is good. Well, everyone hates Chelsea. That's given, except Chelsea. That said. I think it's a bit of a put stretch, isn't it? I mean, I don't know that he's really related to Putin that closely. It feels you like can't a, be a Putin... multi-billionaire in Russia and not basically do everything that Putin says. So you've got to be either in Lee. You can't. Yeah, but Putin, there's nothing Putin could ask him to do that we care about. So it's, it's like he's a non-issue. So this feels like a PR stunt to it, you know, rather than something that's going to make a real difference to anyone. Yeah, well, I, uh, I'm i sure it will end up, because both teams are so bad and it's been such a miserable season for both sides, it will end up as a draw, which is essentially a loss for both teams, right? We, yeah, we have to, both teams have to win in order to have any chance of catching Arsenal. Yeah, I mean, the only chance is that Chelsea go out of business or collapse or something. Or, or, or get banned. Europe. They could get banned from all competitions, which would open up fifth place. Yeah, well, we can only hope. <laughs> anyway, that was the week for March 11th, 2022. It's been a miserable week generally, but uh, Keith has cheered us up with his love of Apple and of, love of Apple screens. And uh, we will see you all next week. And love of Om Malik. Uh, Om Malik is another old guy. Don't you ever cite young people, Keith? He's younger than me. Even older than you are. He's more than a decade younger than me. Is he? He looks older. No, he doesn't. How mean of you. <laughs> On that note, bye, everyone. Bye. What do you want?